uh, section seven, physical models. And we will start uh, with uh, the projectile uh, motion first. Okay. Uh, modeling is a part of solutions of an engineering problems. Okay. Uh, this mathematical description can be obtained by taking advantage of the known laws of physics. So, um, so um, it is necessary to introduce uh, many assumptions that simplify the engineering problems to such extent that the physics laws may be applied. This part of modeling is called the physical models. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the first section, the projectile motion, is a form of motion where a particle is thrown obliquely near the Earth's surface and it moves along a curved path under the action of gravity. Okay. So this path followed by a projectile motion is called this trajectory. Okay. Uh, projectile motions only occurs when there is one force applied at the beginning, beginning of the trajectory after which there is no interference apart from gravity. Uh, the examples on projectile motions include a kick soccer ball, a thrown baseball, or a long jumping athlete. Even fireworks and uh, water fountains are examples of projectile motions like this. This, this is the typical uh, example of a projectile motion. So if you uh, fire uh, bullet on the hill, then uh, that uh, uh, that cannon uh, may go not like this. It may go like this with the, the projectile pass because of the gravity. So with gravity, a projectile first fall below its inertial pass. Gravity acts downward to cause a downward acceleration. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can find the information on uh, these projectile motions uh, from many different resources. Uh, and uh, that you can easily find uh, uh, some explanations and uh, uh, applications and uh, references as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we start. Uh, in the project, in, in uh, our physical model, such as projectile motion, and if we uh, slow a uh, stone from here, then we may think uh, the initial velocity. Mm, like this, and uh, x direction and y directions like this, uh, with the initial velocity on with uh, on x axis on y axis. Uh, then uh, changes in y coordinate uh, is the height. Okay, if uh, the launch angle is theta, then the height can be written as the uh, initial velocity uh, times sine theta to get the height. And co changes in x coordinate, which is called the distance, is the initial velocity times cosine uh, theta launch angles because of this distance can be obtained by v not times the cosine uh, theta here. So, so this x uh, changes in x coordinate called the distance, and the changes in y coordinate called the, the height. And uh, in this motion, the horizontal motion and the vertical motions are independent of each other. Okay, at time t, uh, so let V not be the initial velocity and theta is a launch angle. 
Then at any time t, the projectile's horizontal and vertical displacement can be obtained in this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you throw something from here, then the changes on x-axis can be obtained in this way, and changes on the y-axis can be obtained in this way because of the gravity here. Okay, let's explain in detail. Okay, the vertical motion of the projectile is the motion of a particle during its free fall. Here, the acceleration is, const is a constant, uh, h g equal to the g, gravity, constant. Okay. So, vertical motion and v naught is the, the height minus uh, the gravity times the, uh, dip, uh, the and all those uh, depend on uh, time. Okay, let's see how it works. How it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, this projectile motions. So, for example, if we, if we, without air resistance, if the first velocity is, uh, let's say, it's, uh, it's about 60, then with the uh, launch angle is a 70 degree, uh, then uh, it, the cannon comes up to in this way. If we lower the angle as a 40 degree, then, then it goes like that. So our question is, uh, yeah, when, what will be the, uh, maximum height of this cannonball and what could be the, uh, maximum distance when we, uh, when we throw or when we fire Cannon. Okay, so there, so there are lots of uh, things can be considered in here. So uh, from those observations, yeah, maximum height can be found in this way by finding the critical point, the critical point, and to measure the maximum height, and also. Uh, in order to get the maximum distance, uh, yeah, what will be the most uh, reasonable uh, ang uh, launch angles? And that can be also found uh, it in this way with uh, using the calculus knowledge on these two uh, equation on displacement. Okay, let's analyze. Uh, some more. So in our study of projectile motion, we assume that air resistance effects are negligibly small, but in fact air resistance has a major effect on the motion of many objects, including tennis balls and bicycle riders and airplanes. Like, yeah, we see, we see here, once again, here, we, if we give air resistance, then so uh, we may then w see what what happens. Okay, so without it, so so actually this air resistance uh, makes some differences. So it should be considered uh, in this analysis. So uh, in addition to the uh, velocity and the acceleration and the gravity, and we also. Uh, I may have to consider the air resistance, which can be obtained by uh, this uh, uh, vector mm -hmm. in R2. So the, air, uh, the, the acceleration uh, with the air resistance uh, should be obtained as the gravity plus air resistance, which can be obtained as it, the gravity uh, plus air resistance, so gravity and air resistance in R2. Because the gravity does not affect on x-axis, so there's no change on the x-axis, but gravity does affect on the y-axis to the negative direction, not the positive direction, so we should have minus g here, 
and L resistance yeah, does, does effect on both sides, on x-axis and y-axis in this way. So if we add it, then we have the proper formula like this. So in a projectile uh, model, these are the uh, factors that we have to consider, analyze. Okay, uh, here, uh, there are lots of uh, the information can be found on it. The projectile often moves horizontally as it moves upward and or downward. Here, here is some yeah, presentation of uh, fresh on projectile motion. Mm -hmm. and Hello and welcome to this presentation on projectile you motion. Make a sound. Mm -hmm. We can click. Uh, we can. Yeah, we can click. <laughs> okay. like actually, yeah, this shows. Uh, this shows how this projectile motions uh, works. And when we throw a cannon on a certain height, then. The changes on x-axis and changes on y-axis, uh, real changes can be shown with uh, in in the free fall motions uh, with the gravity, the approximate <coughs> minus ten, and also this shows uh, how it how it moves. So the generated data can naturally give us the, the constant of the uh, gravity. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, and so, they, they, uh, so this can be, uh, so from with those data, uh, with this practice, uh, and you, we can find the, the uh, constant of gravity naturally. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let, now let's uh, explain. Let's explain the projectile motions, and graphing and manipulating linear and quadratic functions. Okay, let's uh, set up our equations for projectile motion. Uh, in uh -huh, we take our initial x position here. Yeah, suppose we start from this position when x is equal to zero, and y start from here, and we take ground level. This is ground level. In the, in the equation, that's the y is equal to zero, and this means uh, our initial uh, y position is often not zero. We may start from the certain height. Mm -hmm. So initial height above the ground level like this, and horizontal velocity component is uh, constant. Yeah, we we when we throw it, and it uh, should uh, work independently, but vertical velocity is affected by gravity, so it not, doesn't stay. At the same height, it should move. So, so move uh, down, uh, move down. So, in the horizontal directions, uh, the x, the changes on x-axis, uh, the directions uh, changes uh, with this formula. You know, the constant velocity as time goes. The distance should be velocity times the time period, and horizontal distance traveled. Uh, should uh, is the uh, product of time and uh, horizontal velocity. What about the vertical directions? Vertical directions, how it uh, changes. This y, the vertical position at time t, uh, uh, can be obtained by adding the acceleration times the time. Uh, the, so this acceleration due to the gravity and the initial. Uh, vertical uh, velocity, yeah, so we, you throw it, and uh, in the and uh, the initial height. So the, uh, with the uh, addition of those factors, that will decide the positions of the object on uh, y-axis okay, as uh, time changes. So combining those two formulas uh, uh, give us uh, the parametric equations like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, with this, uh, we may think about the problems like this. If a football player is trying to kick a field goal from 
35 meters out from here, 35 meters, and if he kicks at an angle of 40 degrees, 40 degrees, then what initial velocity must be given to the ball when the goal post is 3 meters high? So, so, we should, uh, so if he hit hard, then, then it will, uh, in the right direction, then it will go through it without much problem. But if, even though the direction is uh, correct, if it's not, uh, it's when it hits 40 degrees, if it's not strong enough, then it may go like this and may not reach it. So, and so he should know, he should hit hard enough to pass through this one. So, I made, uh, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I made the Excel file to simulate those uh, situations. For example, so uh, with the angle 40, if we hit it uh, like uh, let's uh, like I mean make copy of this. One. See here, if we make it velocity 10 with the, uh, the angle 40 degree, then this doesn't go far enough. It may not even reach the height of 3 meters to pass it. If the velocity is 15, then, then it, it, it goes enough to 5 meters, but it may, uh, but it may still not reach the 3 meters uh, when it passes through the post. But if we make it as a 40, something like this, then yeah, this will be far, it will, it will be enough to go through it. So it's too, it's too much. In that case, we can make a mistake. So 30, uh, velocity 30 will make it a reasonable one. But the, our question is what is the minimum velocity to pass through it? How can you find it? So we can simulate it, uh, like this. And as you see here, what was the distance? It's uh, about 35 meters from away. And so what, what's the important thing is, uh, at 35, 35 meters here, so the, that the ball should pass through 3 meters height. When you hit it, and go up high, and when it go down, and it should be uh, 3 meter uh, high, when it passes through 35 meters here. So this will be, uh, so you, you can usually simulate it from uh, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and things like that to pass whether, when it passes through. So, so it is, this is a kind of simulation that you, you can find it from the website of this address. So you can download it and you can make, it, you can improve it so like this. So it should go like that. So answer was uh, 19.69 meter per second to pass three. That's the that's the exact uh, the values that can be found. So with this velocity, the ball with the 40 degree launching angles will go through it, go up enough, and go down here and barely pass through the 3 meters high at the 35 meters from here, that's it. It will go about this height, 5 meters, something like that, and then go down like this. If it's not, uh, if the, the in launch, uh, launching speed, the initial speed is not less than this, it will go this much and it may not pass the goalpost. So those simulation uh, shows what it should be done. Okay, so this explains how we made uh, these uh, uh, Excel files. Here we added the, the uh, changes on x-axis and changes on y-axis with the formula that we have developed and we gave the initial speed and the launching angle here. So as when this gave, give is given then automatically these uh, changes on x-axis and changes on y-axis uh, can be found to draw the graph at it as time t uh, changes and to draw uh, the, the 
uh, projectile path in the XY uh, plane. Okay, so that's uh, how we found it. Okay, and uh, these uh, uh, formulas uh, were used to uh, fill out uh, these boxes to make this Excel model simulator on projectile motion and we can add some more uh, air resistance and many other factors in it to to generalize it actually we have done it uh, before and and that shows so that shows it and these are the lecture that uh, 자, 이어서 그 mathematical modeling with Excel 네, 프로젝트 네, 모델에 대해서 오영일 군이 발표하겠습니다. You may take a look it on from this web address. Mm -hmm. 예전 수업 시간에 김덕선 박사님께서 알려주신 주사에서 쓰이는 쓰이는 그 각도를 얼마나 나눠야 될까 해서 시작을 하였습니다. 그래서 비행물체 유도를 위한 수학적 모델링이라는 약간 거창한 제목을 달았는데요. 처음에는 그냥 어좀 어떻게 해야 될지 확실히 틀을 잡지 못해서 좀 버벅였는데 일단 엑셀을 먼저 보는 게 좋을 것 같습니다. Uh, this is the way that I am asking you to do. So when you uh, when you make a mathematical model, uh, make uh, a, a simple uh, find uh, related information uh, to build up a uh, kind of modeling in Sage or Excel or any 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 other uh, tools, and then uh, try to practice it. And then when you got understand what is should be done and what you are going to do, and then you start to make the word file to explain what you are trying to do. Add your formulas and the motivations and the explanations of the problems and the equations on it and what you are trying to do it. And then what you do uh, with the simulations uh, and you may add the what, uh, screenshot of those uh, in the file to make the report uh, and so when you uh, uh, present what you have done to your classmate uh, you should uh, use it like this so that's the way that I ask you to do yes, sir. 결국에 워낙 억도제 하는데 이제 그러면 어떤 예를 들어 6,400 등등을 해야 될지 아니면 이런 등등을 해야 될지 라는 결과를 얻고 싶었는데 이 격추 모델을 완벽히 하는 게 어려워가지고 이제 결과적으로 말씀드리면 은그 답은 얻지 못했습니다. 근데 그 중간 과정만 그냥 간단히 설명을 드리면 은 표적 어, 상상 공간상에 이미 좌표에서 표적이 등장한다고 할때 이런 식으로 초기 속도와 초기 속도가 임의로 주어진다면은 이렇게 맞출 수 있는 궤적이 존재하게 됩니다. 그리고 그 각각에 걸, 그 각각까지 걸리는 시간을 구할 수 있고 뭐첫 번째 궤도로는 18초가 걸리고 두 번째 궤도로는 112초가 걸리게 되는데 이런 걸 계산을 했습니다. 그리고 이제 궤도 함수가 주어 그리고 이제 그 무슨 박사님께서 한 번도 얘기를 해줬는데 비행 물체가 원전까지 접근을 해갈 때 일단 일정한 궤도로 접근을 한다고 하셔가지고 아니 일정한 접근 일정한 궤도로 접근을 한다고 해서 이런 2차 함수의 궤도로 접근을 한다고 하고 이제 이 비행 물체의 궤도를 모델링 했습니다. 예를 들어서 비행 물체가 이런 식으로 
이런 식으로 있을 때 그리고 표적의 속도가 변할 때 각각의 1초 후의 위치를 계산을 할수 있고 이 1초 후의 위치를 계산함으로써 이제 몇초 후에 우리가 표적을 사용하고 몇도 각도로 몇도 각도로 사용하는지도 충분히 계산을 해낼 수 있었습니다. 그리고 이거는 이미 새 좌표에서 할때 이미 오브젝트가 출현할 때 이제 저걸 궤도를 그려봤는데요. 이런 식으로 각각의 속도가 변할 때 또다 이제 각각에 대해서 다 구할 수 있었습니다. 그리고 이제 이 물체가 여러 개 등장할 때 어느 물체부터 격추를 시켜야 할지 연구를 해봤는데요. 예를 들어서 이렇게 세, 번, 세 개의 물체가 발사가 될때 예를 들어서 1번, 2번, 3번의 순서를 쌓아야 할지 이렇게 몇 가지의 조합이 나오고 있는데 그거를 지금 계산을 하다가 이것도 좀 복잡해서 여기서 더 이상 진행 못했습니다. 네, 아무튼 여기까지만 마무리 되면은 이제 그 처음에 제기했던 의미가 얼마나 답을 나나 좀더 정확한 요격이 가능할까에 대해서 답을 줄수 있을 것 같은데 이거는 조금 더 제가 생각을 해봐야 될것 같은 문제인 것 같습니다. 지금. 아, 그일본에 회전 하면서 쓰는 게 아니라 회전을 딱 맞춰놓고 쓰지 않아요? 그 관성력은 별 의미가 없습니다. 다시 네, 요새 전기차는 멈춘 뭐. 상태에 쏘지 음. 이동하면서 쏜다고 보지 않을 거예요. 그 포각 시스템이라는 게뭐 이렇게 두두두두두두 이런 시스템이 아니고 이동한 다음에 쏘고 이동한 다음에 쏘는 거기 때문에 그 각도만 최소화하는 시스템만 찾으면 어, 표적 넘버링은 굉장히 쉽게 결정이 됩니다. 컴퓨터에서 바로 표적 결정이 표적 결정이 되면 이런 시스템들이 이제 어디서 많이 쓰는 이지스함 같은 데서 그 표적 추적 시스템에 대한 유도 무기 체계에서 많이 쓰는 그러한 시스템인데. 어, 굉장히 시뮬레이션을 잘 하셨고 어, 제 생각인데 이걸 잘 다듬어서 내년에 유도 무기 같은 한번 직접 내보는 것도 예, 괜찮을 것 같습니다. 음, 그 실트에서 그볼때한 음, 가지 제가 말씀드릴 거 여기서 이제 좀 개선해야 된다라고 판단이 되는 것들은 어, 그 표적까지 이제 도달하는 그 시간이 걸리죠. 그렇죠? 바로 그 물체의 이동에 따라 이제 물, 그 지금 현재 그 대미적 적에 있는데 이왕이면 궤도를 예산을 할때 그 표적 궤도와 동시에 그 접근하는 물체 궤도 그러니까 다 정해져 있을 경우 그게 이제 그래프로 이제 만나는 형태로 나타나죠. 우리가 쏘는 것도 일부러 계적으로 이렇게 나타나지만 우리가 너무 쏘는 계적도 네, 그게 지금 표적 계 You may yeah, go uh, back to this uh, file uh, to uh, practice it, and also you can yeah, you can go through it yeah, what uh, is done here to see. Okay, so I may stop it here. Go back to our problem. So here you can you can go. Uh, to here to see what it is, and also I have uploaded, I have uploaded all of those Excel files and references in the uh, bulletin board in Q and A, and here here is some yeah. So here is yeah here is what you have uh, seen, and in the different web address, mm -hmm. and and also. 
Uh-huh. Also, there are, yeah, there are other uh, physics applets that you can find. Uh, it's at the University of uh, Virginia. Here, the Newton's canons, also this applet, and many others. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this shows how fire. If you wanna send a satellite, then you should hit it strong enough to go. Then it will go away. So, uh, 우리가 뭐지? 그러니까 인공위성을 궤도에 올려놓으려면 적당하게 이런 시뮬레이션을 통해서 통해서 적당하게 음, 쏠수 있게끔 이 궤적에 대한 연구가 아우. 충분히 있어야 <웃음> 되는 거예요. So uh, you can find you can find yeah, many other uh, applets which is related with uh, this projectile motions and also Brownian motion and what collisions. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Shows how fire. Mm. If this is bigger, uh, if it is heavier and this is faster, then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, yeah, there are many. The, all of these kind of uh, applets uh, can be made uh, with the mathematical model, so through the mathematical modeling, I mean, with the proper equations. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, yeah, now, yeah, we're gonna start with the planet orbit. Yeah, planet orbit. One of the, uh, one of another, uh, the important uh, physical models. Okay, before we start the planet orbit, uh, is there any questions? Okay, before we start uh, planet orbit, uh, I you uh, I uh, I ha I can show you. Uh, here, uh, I have uploaded, uh, I have uploaded uh, the files on uh, here. Uh, I have uh, I have uploaded the lecture note uh, on uh, this projectile motion and planet model that you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also I have uploaded, uh, uploaded, um, I have uploaded uh, Excel files for projectile model, and also the explanation of explanation of the mathematical modeling on the uh, those planet models. So you may. You may uh, refer uh, these files to do what you're supposed to do, including I have also uploaded uh, some of the Excel files there. So this, I'm, we're gonna uh, go through uh, these uh, um, simulations and the explanation of the uh, planet orbit, and also uh, I have uploaded the. Uh, Mathematical modeling on physical uh, physics uh, on a pro, uh, the flying object. Actually, it's a project uh, projectile models, and that explanation or and the explanation on Excel files were given in here, and how this Excel file was made, uh, made and how it can be used, including the mathematical reasoning and references in here. And also, here, here is the, this is a, a 다단계, uh, uh, 다단계 미사일을 쏠 때, this is also the Excel file that shows if we, uh, hit, uh, if we hit hard, here, um, if we change, then let's see, how it 
moves. So, yeah, so this shows uh, the problems that we uh, mentioned before. And also, uh, this, simil this Excel file shows, shows uh, the planet uh, that we live in, how this Sun, Venus, and Earth, and Mars, and Moons uh, moves here. So, yeah, in this uh, system, if we change the, uh, the numbers, and then it will make, it will give us, uh, uh, it will show you how uh, this uh, system uh, uh, the changes, and including all other simulations. And, and so these are the kind of Excel file that you can practice. And also, uh, with those, I have uploaded, uh, I have uploaded, uh, the, those Excel files can be done in, um, in this. For example, in the population model, mm -hmm. in this address, uh, if you practice it in the, with the Chrome, then, uh, this is uh, what it can be done. Here, this sage uh, cell uh, was made uh, to call the Excel file the data. Excel file uh, Excel files can be simulated in sage without uh, much difficulty. So you don't have to install any uh, software to do simulation on this. This uh, gives us uh, the, the as the time changes uh, and the um, and and the the, the 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 how the situations situations has been uh, changed and also I have practiced uh, with uh, your grade your the Excel files on your 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 point your Grade. The, this is student number, and these are the points that you have earned on the on homeworks and uh, uh, the PBL report and online attendance and uh, and such and such. So those Excel files was naturally uh, uh, can be draw can be uh, can be called without much. Uh, Difficulty. So you can use this uh, cell. Uh, so you, whenever you have the Excel file, then you just upload the Excel file somewhere and just give this uh, web address uh, here to do the any simulation that you like to do uh, in this uh, stage. So there are really many things that uh, can be done uh, in here. Okay, what else? Okay, anyway, those are the things that I have uploaded for you. So, yeah, you may, yeah, you may, yeah, you may refer yeah, some of them. I also added, uh, this is a retirement planning. And uh, actually, this is the data that I earned when our actuarial uh, science uh, program had uh, uh, the, the, the summer uh, Special lecture series on on actual for for future actuaries and these Excel files are, are dealing with the retirement planning like a pension and the scheduling of the future security after the retirement. If you change uh, if the real rate of return and require if you change the Ratio. If you change the ratio, do it, and that will make the difference. If you save a lot more money, uh, percent here. If you save by fifty-seven percent of your your income, then that will make uh, uh, changes uh, and after uh, years uh, to secure your your life after the retirement and those kind of files has been uploaded here so you may uh, 
I may practice it. Uh, for for uh, Kimo, uh, some of you may change this uh, the file name in English uh, to so he Kimo also can use it or make a PDF file uh, for him to do practice with some of the with those uh, informations. Okay, now now we start a planet orbit. Okay, the, uh, in physics, uh, an orbit is the gravita gravitational curved path of one object around the point or another body. Okay, for example, the gravitational orbit of a planet around a star. This. Okay. Okay, Johannes Kepler was able to show that the motion of the planets were, in fact, elliptical motions. Isaac Newton was able to prove uh, this was equivalent to an inverse square. Uh, and he called uh, the gravitation. Okay, Albert Einstein was able to show that gravity is due to curvature of space-time and the orbit lie upon geodesics. Let's see. Uh, Copernicus developed the first uh, uh, sun-centered model of the solar system. Use a system like, like this. Uh, Tycho Brahe, he is, the, uh, he is a scientist who observed uh, with the microscope uh, and, and the, the behaviors of celestial uh, stars. Mm -hmm. And he left a uh, lot of data on it. And Kepler, uh, Kepler was a uh, uh, student of him. So he, after Brahe's death, uh, Kepler uh, used uh, Tycho's observation to deduce the three laws of planetary motion. Actually, those can be found in here. Uh, here. This is the history of uh, calculus. History of calculus. The birth of calculus. Okay. And Copernicus was there. And this is the old years. And Tycho Brahe. And he, he, uh, he was a genius observer. And he observed the trajectory of motions, the planets. And he compiled a huge number, amount of data. As you see, he lost his nose while a student in a duel in 1566. As you see, he has, a, yeah, he lost his nose. And Johannes Kepler, uh, he was a genius in analyzing data. Mm -hmm. And uh, become Brahe's assistant in 1599, and he discovered the quantitative laws based on Tycho Brahe's data and published the Copernican astronomy in 1618 to 1621. And then, uh, then uh, this, uh, this Kepler's first and second and third law and started. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is, this, uh, from this observation, he found the area on the, the same time period uh, are same like this. That's what he found. Mm -hmm. And then Galileo Galilei, uh, and uh, he actually, he, he really initiated the birth of the modern uh, science and calculus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Calculus. Mm -hmm. He improved the telescope. And then, uh, Rune Descartes and uh, uh, and uh, this uh, Huygens and Hooks and Halley and Wren contributed uh, on this research uh, and eventually Isaac Newton and uh, Leibniz uh, accomplished uh, the big step on on uh, mm. 
in the calculus and also they, does, they, uh, they supply the theoretical uh, reasons for all of those work which was done before. You may uh, listen on uh, those stories uh, from this uh, website uh, and on, you may start from the Copernicus. Mm -hmm. Where is the sound? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this uh, shows that uh, the sound should be quite okay. It is it, uh, a good explanation on those. Uh, and here, here, this type of bracket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 16th century Europe saw many changes. A revival of humanist thought led many to broaden their ways of thinking about the world. Humanism is a philosophy that supports reason and respect. Humanists encouraged education as this was the basis to merge Ptolemy to make sure he had the highest quality instruments. He basically enlarged and improved instruments that were already being used to help increase his accuracy. Brahe wanted to find a way to merge Ptolemy's theories with those of Copernicus. He proposed that the sun and the moon revolve around the earth, allowing the earth to remain the center of the universe. However, he also said that the other planets revolved around the sun. When Copernicus and Brahe attended universities to study, they were introduced to the study of the ancient Greek philosophers. Astronomy had been understood until this point in the 16th century, according to Ptolemy's theory that the Earth was the center of the universe. Copernicus suggested a new idea, that the sun was central to the orbiting planets. The idea was met with contempt from both Catholics and Protestants who believed his theory went against scripture. Brahe attempted to bridge the two theories, saying the planets orbited the sun which, together with the moon, orbited Earth. These theories were some of the earliest to challenge ancient ideals and inspire the modern study of astronomy. As you see, yeah, there will be a lot of information on those, uh, it's, uh, and also I will upload some of the reference that you can uh, use. Anyway, so the three laws of uh, planetary motions. And the first one, uh, Kepler's first law. The orbit of a planet around the sun is an ellipse with the sun at one focus. Okay. Sun at one focus. Here is the this is ellipse, so we need the two focus. And sun is at one uh, takes the position at one focus. And the second law of Kepler says a line joining the planet and the sun sweeps out equal area in equal interval of time. If the when the uh, uh, when uh, that the when planet move faster in its orbit when closer to the sun. When when the planet was closer to sun, then it goes faster, so it makes a reasonable uh, size of area here. But when the the planet is far away from the sun, that goes very slowly. So the area that makes it is a little small. But if you compare those two areas with the same time period, they are equal. Planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time intervals. That's what he found. His third law, the square of a planet's uh, side, side rear period around the sun is directly proportional to the cube of its semi-major axis. And this all comes from those data. After observing those data, after the simulating those data, then they, he was able to found he was uh, he was able to uh, simulate the data of his uh, uh, teacher uh, Tycho Brahe and to found this kind of the rules in the planet. Galileo was the first to use the telescope to examine celestial objects. His discoveries supported a uh, heliocentric model of the solar system. Galileo discovered that Venus, like the moon, 
undergoes a series of phases as seen from Earth. And Galileo also discovered the moons in orbit around the planet Jupiter. This was further evidence that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Okay. So that made uh, a whole big changes in the history of uh, math and science. Isaac Newton formulated uh, three laws to describe the fundamental properties of physical reality. Here is the Newton's three laws of motion. Law 1. Body remains at rest or moves in a straight line at constant speed unless acted upon by a net outside force. Law 2. The acceleration of an object is proportional to the force acting on it. Law 3. Whenever one body exerts a force on a second body, the second body exerts an equal and opposite force on the first body. Okay. He also discovered that gravity, the force that caused the object to fall to the ground on Earth, is the same force that keeps the moon in its orbit around the Earth. Okay. So, so Newton's law of universal gravitation tells two objects attract each other with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. With this, with his law, Newton was able to drive Kepler's three laws as well as predict other possible orbits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These laws were applied to other objects in our solar system. Halley used it and etc. So, uh, so, the inner so, so let's do some analysis on it. In aero, di, uh, aerodynamics or celestial dynamics, orbital state vectors, uh, uh, so it, uh -huh, uh, sometimes state vectors are vectors of position and velocity that together with uh, their time uniquely determine the state of an orbiting body. State vectors are excellent for pre-launch orbital prediction when combined uh, with time expressed as an offset to the launch time. This makes the state vectors time independent and uh, good general prediction for orbits. Okay. Okay. This uh, a picture uh, shows the relationship uh, in the uh, Planet with the orbit. Here is a simple orbit examples: Sun and Earth and Moons. Here, these are the uh, the relationship uh, between uh, these uh, objects. Okay, Moon, Earth, and Sun. And this can be uh, uh, simulated. These relations can be simulated in here like this if you change if you change the uh, axis then then you will see you will see how it can be if you change the parameters then all this can be done because of those those real, the formulas uh, which was derived with those formulas uh, these simulations uh, can be Uh, made and also uh, there are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 자, you may take a look what is going on. 근데 지금 보면 과학에서는 그동안 옛날에 이런 것들이 60년대, 70년대 다 불가능해 보였어요. 그게 인터넷이 가능해지고 그리고 컴퓨테이션할 계산이 바로 하는 얘기가 그 바로 계산이 계속 데이터를 그 뽑아내고 그것도 또 시뮬레이션이 가능하고 한 것들이 가능해지니까 다른 사이언스나 그 과학의 다른 과학 분야에서는 그런 것들을 활용해서 그런 그 내용들을 다 설명해서 바꿔주는 거 이미 다 바뀌었는데 수학은 저런 그 과학이 지난 50년 동안 엄청나게 발전해왔고 실제로 이 순환에서 모든 걸할수 있는
인터넷까지 이 테크놀로지가 발전해 와 있었는데 수학은 그런 노력들은 거의 안 하고 이 현세에만 의지, 의지하고 있었던 것을 우리가 다시 한번 이런 매스 모델링을 보면서 그 알게 되죠. 괜히 음, 오케이. Okay, so yeah, we, yeah, as you see, if we know the, if now is a very good time, if we understand uh, the the mathematical uh, formulation, and if we can do do mathematical modeling, uh, there are lots of things that we can do uh, from now on. Okay, in here, in this model, so with those with those relationship, yeah, we were. It, this just shows uh, where it is located. Okay, so with this relationship, then we can do uh, the 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 we can make the Excel file uh, to to simulate those changes uh, in Excel, and we can also uh, draw the 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 chain. We can uh, draw the simulation that shows how it can act. When uh, the conditions uh, were changed, okay, there are uh, several others. Uh, so I will uh, show what it is. Okay, here the time to print organization blackout then project tie. Mm -hmm. I have uploaded. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. 자, 이어서 그 mathematical modeling with Excel. Mm -hmm. This shows the projectile models. 볼때 네, 네 이쪽의 네, 내용을 네. 그런 내용들을 좀몇개더좀 섹션별로 나눠 이렇게 직접 저희가 서브미 해놓고 발표도 할수 있을 정도로. 손을 보면은 퍼블리셔블한 일을. So I'm going to I'm going to show you. How uh, this uh, uh, sun centered uh, uh, model can be formulated in Excel. 그래서 이것을 위해서 어떤 그 R, 즉 아까 말씀드렸던 그 태양에서 지구까지의 거, 어, 태양에서 지구까지의 거리에 비례한 지구에서 달까지의 거리 그 R을 우리가 0.3이라고 두고. 그러니까 뭐 우리가 아까 태양에서 지구까지 거리 1이라고 뒀을 때 거기에 3, 30% 거리 정도라고 생각을 하고 어, 달도 12개월 주기로 한 바퀴를 돕니다. 그러기 때문에 12개월의 먼스를 이렇게 준 다음에 어, 지구와 어, 지구에서 본 상대적인 달의 위치 이두 가지를 계산을 하신다면 어, 태양에서 보는 어, 달의 위치들을 X와 Y의 좌표로서 표현하실 수가 있겠습니다. 그래서 이것을 엑셀에다 표기하기 위해서 여기서 보시듯이 어, 지구의 x 위치와 지구의 y 위치를 다음과 같이 코사인 2 파이 t 사인 2 파이 t로 어, 표시하기 위해서 엑셀에서는 이렇게 코사인에 2 곱하기 파이 곱하기 a 파이브 즉 a 파이브에 있는 시간이 있죠 여기 그 시간에 의한 t를 여기에 넣어주시면 됩니다. 어, 여러분들이 보시기에 여기 수식 이 가로가 마치 0 같이 보이는데 이것은 가로를 열고 닫고 한 표시입니다. 여러분들이 나중에 엑셀을 아마 어, 수업 시간에 오시기 전에 모두 홈페이지에서 보셨으니까 여기 있죠. 예, 뭐그 보셨으니까 아시겠지만 여기에는 이게 가로입니다. 가로. 예, 파이라고 하는 함수예요. 어, 그래서 이 파이에 대한 값으로 다음과 같이 어, 값을 어, 주시면 되겠습니다. 어, 지구에서 본 달의 위치는 아까 말씀드렸던 것처럼 R을 곱하게 됩니다. 그렇죠? 예, B1에 있는 값을 항상 곱해야 되는데 B1에 있는 값이 조정되면 안 되겠죠. 그래서 달러를 붙여준 거고 코사인 2 파이 T 그 t를 해주는데 얘는 주기를 갖고 있습니다. 그렇죠? 12개월의 주기를 갖고 있기 때문에 주기만큼 또 곱해준 겁니다. 주기가 b2에 있기 때문에 앞뒤에 달러를 붙여서 이런 식으로 고정시킨 값으로 어, 파라메트라이제이션 해준 거고요. 그 다음에 태양에서 본 달의 위치는 아까 말씀드렸듯이 2벡타와 2벡타의 합입니다. 
그렇죠? 그러니까 간, 간단하게 x좌표와 y좌표가 어, x좌표 더하기 y좌표가 된 값을 여기에 넣어주시면 어, 태양에서 본 달의 위치까지 우리가 어, 파악을 할 수가 있게 됩니다. 그렇게 입력한 것이 바로 이런 이런 시트죠. 그렇죠? 예, 최초의 지구 위치를 1,0으로부터 시작해서 어, 달의 위치도 처음에 여기서부터 이제 1,0으로부터 시작하고 그 다음에 태양에서 본 달의 위치를 이렇게 시작한 다음 어, 다음 스텝에서는 시간이 어느 정도 흘렀을 때 일정 구간만큼 흘렀을 때 다음과 같이 그 값을 어, 바로 위에 있는 값을 이런 식으로 해서 딱 드래그해서 내려주시면 바로 다음 값까지도 손쉽게 어, 구하실 수가 있습니다. 우리가 주기가 많이 되더라도 그 주기들을 모두 구하실 수가 있죠. 그래서 이것을 음... 그래서 이것을 차트화해서 그려보면 다음과 같습니다. 그래서 달의 궤도를 이런 식으로 어, 생각을 해볼 수가 있습니다. 일반적으로 아까 제가 제시했던 어, R이 0.3일 때 12개월일 때는 달이 다음과 같은 형태로 어, So I will explain and I will add some more information on it and then you just go through it and ask me whatever you like to get more on uh, this uh, orbital models. I think that's uh, th th I, today I have shown two physics models. One is projectile model, and uh, another is uh, orbital models. And those are the typical models that you can uh, simulate it with the data. So all those data can be obtained from the equations that you found. That we found. So mathematical model uh, link technique uh, can be really uh, used for the for may, uh, for the under, for the better understanding of the world and our life. Okay. So on Wednesday, yeah, we will continue to what you have worked on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions?